Hey guys, today we're taking a quick look at Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, a long lost main entry in my favorite horror franchise and by far the most in need of a remaster. There's a pretty crazy story around the original game's development and release, but I may save that for a future video. All you need to know for now is, this was a Japanese exclusive game designed exclusively for the Wii, featuring forced motion controls. So yeah, it was not the most easy experience to play, but if you get used to it, it was actually kind of fun and interesting. This remaster is out on pretty much every platform, but for today we'll be mainly taking a look at the Switch, PS4, and PS5 versions to see how they compare to the original, and I'll only be showing a little bit past the prologue to avoid spoilers. We'll be getting the graphics next, but first let's take a look at the controls. On the Wii, your only control option was Wiimote and Nunchuck. You use a control stick to move around, and the Wiimote's motion controls your flashlight and camera. Your movement will also influence the camera, and this can make moving around a bit easier. When looking around the world for items, you'll often need to use the Wiimote for finer aim. You can move it up to look up, and down to look down, and twist it either left or right to turn the camera in that direction. And with a quick shake, you can do a 180 degree turn. It's manageable, as you don't really need to point the Wiimote at the screen the whole time, but it can get a little tiring after a while. You can try to mitigate this by resting your arms on your lap, but anytime you need to adjust your arms, your character's aim will dramatically change. And this new control method means that the combat had to be reworked quite a bit, and a new lock-on feature is added to compensate for the change of the combat in your limited motion. Some may argue that this makes the game a little bit too easy, but the game by no means plays itself, and I think the new mechanics still keep the fights fairly engaging. So how is all this handled in the remaster? Well, the lock-on is kept, and movement still seems to be restricted to 16 directions, but a game now uses a much more traditional control layout. Many of the motions and actions are replaced with simple button commands, including Quick Turn, which is now mapped to L3 and R3. And much like Maiden of the Black Water, there are two control layouts and optional camera aiming for people who prefer it. But the camera is still influenced by player movement, so even after adjusting it, it can still feel kind of weird compared to other modern games. But it's still a huge improvement over the original. Overall, even with the leftover quirks of the original design, controlling the game is much more manageable in the remaster. And while I do consider that a clear positive, the already easy combat is not adjusted to compensate, making the simplicity even more noticeable. As strange as it sounds, I kinda wish the Switch version featured an option to have the Joy-Cons simulate a more precise version of the original motion controls. Just a bonus option to give people the option to experience an improved version of the game's original feel, but with the remaster's modern conveniences. And while the original was designed from the ground up for the Wii, it could still suffer from some severe performance issues at times, mainly when attempting to load an upcoming area, but you'd also have noticeable weight when you open or close the menu or map. But on just about every major platform, the remaster eliminates this. The only time I was able to see even a small bit of stuttering is when playing the game off a slow USB hard drive. So if you had a super old hard drive in your base model PS4 or a super cheap SD card in the Switch, you may run into this, but it's very infrequent and not very noticeable. And the last thing to note before moving on to the graphics section is just like Made in the Black Water, either buying a PS4 or PS5 version will get you both, however they have a split trophy list and separate save files with no transfer option. Alright, on to the graphics comparison. I'll be playing the original on the Wii U through HDMI capture, and to accurately represent the game's original form, I'll be setting the console to 480p, as this disables the Wii U's aggressive upscaling filter. Okay, so let's compare them in resolution order, starting with the original on the Wii. This console can max output 480p, and this resolution looks pretty accurate to that. The Switch Remaster looks much better. It does not appear to be a full 1080p, possibly somewhere between 720 and 900 while docked, and it's a noticeable improvement over the original, not just in resolution, but lighting, shadow, and colors as well. The PS4 version is next, and this is much more in line with what I expect from a native 1080p output. Same great improvements from the Switch, but with sharper image quality overall. You can mostly notice this extra sharpness when looking at the film grain effect. It's a nice step up from the Switch, but both of them still look great. And just for fun, here's how it should look on the PS4 Pro. It seems to be pretty in line with the PS4 version, so I can't even tell there's any Pro enhancements at all. Nothing noticeable at 1080p. And the PS5 version seems to be the most noticeable improvement. It has all the improvements in the other versions, but looks just a bit cleaner. Higher resolution shadows, too, and maybe some post-processing effects, or maybe some downsampling from a higher resolution, but regardless, it looks great. And not only does it look better, it actually runs at a pretty solid 60fps. 
However, texture quality and filtering appears to be about the same. It looks like there's a fair amount of original Wii era textures here. They have been upscaled, but the effect looks better on some than others. I'm glad they avoided going for a simple blur filter, but some of these look just a little bit too sharp. But overall, I don't think they're bad enough to distract from gameplay, and that's important in atmospheric games. Alright, so quick recap. The Switch version is pretty solid, great image quality in docked or handheld, and the frame rate is pretty consistent. I did notice a few very minor drops at times, but they're not very noticeable, nor do they slow down the game like on the Wii version. It's just a minor disruption to the smoothness. And it may be hard to tell with YouTube's compression, but it's expected the PS4 does edge out the Switch a bit in terms of clarity. The Switch's frame rate is pretty solid, but the PS4 pretty much keeps it locked at 30 FPS even without an SSD. And of course, the PS5 at the top. Best image quality, and while it's not mandatory for slower games like this, the 60 FPS is a nice bonus. Well, that's all for this quick comparison. Special thanks to Koei Tecmo America for providing the Switch and PlayStation game codes. Uh, this was by no means a review, but if you're looking for a recommendation, I say for Fatal Frame fans looking to play through the series, this is a must play. Unlike the 3DS spin-off Spirit Camera, this is actually a main series entry, and while it has its problems, I'd still say it's worth playing. But for new fans trying to get into Fatal Frame, well, this game is standalone, so you could start with it, but it's also fairly experimental. It's the fourth game in the series, but it's the first made under Nintendo's ownership, the first to drop the fixed camera, and the first to feature motion trolls, oh, and they brought on a new co-director. So I think you'd be able to appreciate it more if you played the original trilogy first. They are available digitally for PS3 for pretty cheap, and I assume if this game sells well, they may see remasters too. But overall, this game is still an interesting take on the classic Fatal Frame formula. It takes a few risks and some pay off and others don't, but if you're looking to play through the series, this is not only the only official way to play the game in English, it's also the best way to play this game, period. And while it's not my favorite game in the series, I still found it pretty interesting and had a lot of fun. So I think if you go in with an open mind with some experience with Fatal Frame under your belt, you could have some fun too. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.